So today I'm pretty pumped because we are going to visit a sustainable eel farm. I really like anything to do with animals. I like them so much um, and I like fish and I like snakes. So this is a fish snake and this is an animal and this is about sustainability and all of that. So I am really excited. farm we need to follow this for four point no two point four kilometers until you get to 224 Ohotira road you will see a red mailbox on the right this is very easy to miss two two four but that's here yeah yeah we will meet these people and say where can we park <laughs> Because we can't get up there. Of course we can't. Yeah, exactly. So we arrived there and we're sort of waiting at the red mailbox. Eventually, a lady in one of those 4x4 comes down the road and we go up to her and we're like, Hey, we're here for the eel farm. She's farming eels, right? So she's eating the eels, right? And selling them for export. But she does it in a sustainable way. And she's actually one of the only person in New Zealand, I think, to do that, so, which is pretty great because New Zealand eels are actually a delicacy in many, many parts of the world and they're really well known. So she does that not in an industrial way, but sustainable, which means that she only keeps a small quantity of them. She let them go to maturity instead of getting killing them young. She let them reproduce. She will introduce some in some rivers and all that. So she basically does a whole work. So we're in a farm which has like two two small ponds where the eels come from the river right beside it but the whole farm itself is further upstream but Jan keeps these two ponds so she can show people the eels and stuff like that and she's brought with her a few Tupperware boxes of steak so Guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna feed the eels, which is like a really cool way to actually see them really close. And despite them being blind, their instincts are so good that they just like smell it in the water and they slither their way up to the stake. And you can even put it just a little bit higher out the water and they'll, they'll slither their way out the water and take it from you and even like have a little tug of war with the stake. That was really cool to, to see that. They have very good eyesight, but they can smell. So smell like Did you see that? Oh, it's so cute! It's so cute! <laughs> the populations are still high because she's just using the one, some of them from the river and not using all of them for farming, which other places would do. So, you know, she's just taking a little bit of the time farming the eels, sending them to the to Asia and places like that, which um, really appreciate the New Zealand eels as a cuisine. Now you have to be a little bit quick because eels have a very strange kind of teeth. So this is the eel mouth. And the teeth of the eel itself is straight actually facing backward. So if they bite you and you try to pull, you're just you know, gonna hurt yourself more. All right, so that's uh, pretty much it for the eel farms. Our tour was about 15 minutes, but honestly, we learned a lot and we had a lot of fun. After our time with Jan and the eels and the ducks, we then head back into Raglan. We just sort of pot around the town a bit. It's a surf town, so 
Every street corner seems to have a Rip Curl or a Roxy or a Quicksilver or any other sort of surf brands. They're all there because Raglan is like a top surf destination in the world. Who decided to put a cone right here and how did they get it up there? Please explain. It has like a few historic buildings, a bit of artwork here, some sort of back alleys, which you don't expect anything to be down, but it's actually some sort of like hipster joint where people are just having a coffee down an alley and it's like tiny little, little coffee place. People are just hanging out, just enjoying each other's company. We go back to Raglan Backpackers and they have a spa pool. And we've been eyeing up this spa pool since we arrived yesterday and we were like, we are getting in that spa pool. It's really nice, obviously it's a spa pool, but I feel within five minutes I'm burning a lot. I'm not very good with uh, heat. So I'm just there like cooking like a lobster. Robin's just like chillaxing for the whole time, like, oh yeah, this is so nice. And I'm literally like, the top of my body is white and the bottom is red. It was hot, but it was welcome. It was comfortable for five minutes. So after our spa pool sesh, we sort of have some food and get ready for our pub quiz. Um, we're meeting one of the guys that works in the hostel and he's like, yeah, come to the quiz. It's the first time this quiz is going on, so I don't know what it's going to be like, but let's, yeah, we're going, come with us. We're answering all the questions, we're having a blast, we're chit-chatting with the locals. I'm drinking beer too, because I'm not driving tonight. Whoa, whoa! Robin is like killing the quiz questions because he's such a freaking nerd. The people we're with are just like, whoa, we are so glad we have you on our team. I mean, I, I obviously answer quite a lot myself because I'm really the brains behind this operation. We lost for half a point. And one of the questions, the, the answer was twice the same word. So we, we would have got this half a point. Oh God. Anyway, it's fine. I had fun. I'm not winning. I'm a bit competitive. <laughs>